Hello again. Welcome to another session of Surgical Pathology Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program is made possible by the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a project of the Digital Pathology Association and Path Presenter, which is providing the software and digital slide library. Uh, my time, of course, is uh, provided by the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, and our cases often come from uh, uh, referrals to or patients who come to the uh, Stevenson Cancer Center, seen here, a designated NIH uh, cancer center, uh, with particular expertise in GYN uh, uh, cases and oncology. So our case today, again, comes from the occasional challenges in gynecologic pathology, and we want to focus on uh, cervical squamous lesions. Uh, in this case, a patient who had a uh, abnormal pap smear and underwent a leap cone biopsy. Um, the reason, of course, we do that is to evaluate for the evidence of something worse than uh, what was seen on a pap test uh, to identify invasion. And so our focus today is on what things uh, to look for when we uh, are trying to decide if there is a uh, uh, early invasive carcinoma present. So here's our digital uh, slide. And as we can see, we have uh, fragments of uh, cervix with the transition zone between squamous epithelium, glandular epithelium, squamous epithelium, glandular epithelium, squamous epithelium, glandular epithelium here. So you got a nice representative representation of the squamocolumnar junction. Um, at low magnification, we can see that the squamous epithelium here, uh, nicely highlighted by these blue dots, uh, is a little bit uh, hyperplastic uh, and uh, it seems bluer than maybe here it is, uh, would be at the margin over here. Um, similarly, we have similar tissue over here and similar tissue over here, um, and maybe even some uh, involving some glandular spaces here. So uh, what should we be looking for? Well, that hyperchromasia, of course, is a marker for CIN3, uh, representing uh, areas where uh, the, uh, there's no loss of maturation, uh, where the cells uh, have uh, increased the uh, nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. And we can see that very nicely here. Uh, so this is not a, a problem. Now we've identified the CIN3. And as we can see here, it does involve a glandular space. Uh, extending down here below the surface, um, a significant finding to report. Uh, but I want to go back here to low magnification because there's something that stands out here. Uh, and the first clue is to look for the lymphocytes. The lymphocytes will oftentimes tell you where there is uh, uh, antigens being presented, where there is something of a change going on. And as we can see here, we've got increased lymphocytes along this uh, uh, border here. And while you commonly have uh, chronic inflammation, where they seem to be accentuated is an area where we should go. So that's the first change to look for, is the presence of uh, lymphocytes. Another change that's happening here, subtly we'll go uh, first to this area here, is this subtle change in coloration that we can see right here. Uh, here the cells, uh, all fairly uniform, but then there's this area right here where the cytoplasmic uh, uh, contour seems to change a little bit. There seems to be more cytoplasm. Uh, and so that's a marker to say, look for possible invasion because there's some sort of a uh, change going on that is changing the way things mature. Um, and in fact, as we look here, uh, we see that this has gone a little bit further and we see actually a, a little keratin pearl being formed here, uh, this rounded up nest. Or as we look uh, right adjacent to the uh, uh, squamocolumnar junction here, we see some atypical cells. Um, and so this is what has been termed paradoxical keratinization, uh, meaning that it, uh, rather than occurring at the surface, it is paradoxically occurring down deep. So that's another clue uh, that we have um, potentially an invasion, invasive process going on. Uh, that can be seen while it still is part of the uh, main mass. Uh, that's a clue right there. And here it's more fully developed uh, as it actually extends into the uh, uh, tumor or into the, into the stroma. The other change that is evident here is a change in the stroma. 
Notice how we begin to get this um, increased ground substance in the stroma, uh, changes from pink to sort of a pale blue, uh, and uh, becomes a little bit more fibroblastic or my myofibroblastic. That's another clue that something abnormal is going on here in the uh, tumor stromal interface, and that is probably going to mean invasion. So there's uh, three clues we've identified so far. The fourth clue is, uh, of course, this irregular contour. As we see here, this is a jagged, irregular contour. You can't draw a smooth line around this because it's got to go in and out and up and down. Uh, so these are markers that uh, these cells are breaking off from the main mass and potentially invading into the stroma where they evoke a response, which actually here we can see involves some neutrophils as well, which would be a, a further clue. Um, so uh, those are the primary clues to be looking for here in this situation uh, to identify the uh, lymphocytes, identify the increased uh, cytoplasm, uh, so-called paradoxical keratinization, to identify a change in the stroma, and then to identify uh, the irregular contours or budding that is occurring here. Now, obviously, sometimes irregular contours can occur as part of the uh, process of uh, sectioning and so forth. So we might look at this area and wonder, is this um, invasion or is this just a sectioning of a, an adjacent area? Um, and it's hard to determine here. This could be termed suspicious for invasion with this, these irregularly shaped and slightly rounded nests extending below the main lesion. But we don't have the other markers that we have here to definitively identify this as being invasion. Uh, looking a little bit further afield, uh, there's one additional uh, mar um, uh, feature that can be useful in identifying invasion. Uh, when we don't have uh, these other factors. And that is the marker of these uh, vessels. Uh, large vessels with uh, muscular walls are typically deeper in the stroma than just within the mucosa. See, we don't see those vessels up here. But if we see tumor nests down adjacent to these uh, kind of vessels uh, in the stroma, we should become highly suspicious that this is an invasive, invasive neoplasm. And some tumors are sufficiently subtle that they can invade without provoking a very marked uh, desmoplastic response like this or without the paradoxical keratinization. And so if you see a CIN3-like lesion, a nest of this kind of stuff uh, down here adjacent to these kind of vessels, uh, you should uh, raise your, your sights and think towards uh, early invasion or potentially more significant invasion because uh, this will then begin to be a measurable uh, deeper invasion. So these vessels with uh, thicker walls, uh, musculature in them uh, can also be helpful. So there's a quick rundown of some pearls. Uh, here I've summarized them. Look for the lymphocytes. Look for a change in the stroma. Look for paradoxical keratinization look for budding or isolated uh, single cells or an abnormal contour to the nests, and then look for uh, lesion at budding larger vessels. Those are the clues that will help you to identify early stromal invasion. So thanks for joining us. Our final sign out on this case would be cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, grade three or H-cell with early stromal invasion. So early uh, invasive squamous carcinoma. Uh, we hope that uh, you enjoyed this and that uh, you'll please subscribe, uh, share this video with your friends or colleagues uh, that are in training. Uh, and of course, we also welcome your comments. Uh, so we look forward to those. Hope to see you again next time.